So the Premier League, the PGMOL, pundits alike, slammed Arsenal, condemned Liverpool for their, as this headline refers to, their VAR moaning, for going public about the disgrace, which is VAR, the inconsistencies, the poor judgments, the timing of decisions. They've been absolutely slammed for calling out, at best, the incompetencies, at worst, the corruption that fans think is behind this. And although the Premier League has condemned Arsenal, condemned Liverpool, although it's played down the idea that these clubs shouldn't feel cheated, the Premier League chief now admits that the system needs fixing because it's broke, and the experience for for fans in stadiums is dreadful. And reading the article... Here's a passage from it which says the Premier League hit back at Arsenal and Liverpool over their complaints about VAR this season, but acknowledge the process needs improvement. Both clubs have controversially released statements this season criticising VAR following decisions that did not go their way. The Premier League chief of football, Tony Scholes, responded by saying it doesn't help when they go public with a statement when we are talking regularly. We consult with managers already and have two meetings a year and visit the squad. So essentially uh, slamming them here. But within the same report, it's now come out that the PGMOL have admitted four errors that have gone against Liverpool this season, and two for Arsenal. Now, Arsenal don't include the controversial decisions that, that the PGMOL has defended themselves. So the penalty they should have had against Aston Villa, the goal that should have been disallowed against Newcastle, they defended those decisions. So they don't count in the wrong pot. The same as Man United. The goal we conceded against Crystal Palace, as an example, goes. they put that in the correct pot, even though every sane-thinking football fan knows these are huge mistakes. So as much as the, the, the PGMOL and the Premier League appear to be transparent and forward-thinking here, it is still so underhand. They have admitted, in my personal opinion, Through one word or one way or another, they've cheated Liverpool, they've cheated Arsenal, they've cheated many teams this year, including Wolverhampton Wanderers, who have had some shocking decisions go against them. But they're condemning anybody that speaks out about it. They're still protecting referees with their decisions. And they're talking about this as though, yeah, we know it's broken. We know it's messed up. We are going to try and fix it. But please, nobody talk about it. Please, nobody bring the game into disrepute. You're bringing the game into disrepute. And I'm not someone that believes in conspiracy theories that the Premier League are getting together. We've got to make sure City win the league. We've got to make sure Arsenal don't win it. I don't believe it goes that far, that deep. But I do believe there is a certain level of arrogance, a conceited, vain, arrogant approach from these governing bodies that doesn't allow them to handle criticism and although they're having these meetings they are still screwing teams out of points which are hugely important for their campaigns and i don't believe they are taking accountability for these mistakes they are not fixing the problems in the processes quick enough and yes the experience in the stadiums is terrible for fans turn on the sound so we can hear what's being said That there where lies the issue for me. What are you protecting by not allowing us to hear the audio in real time? What's being said that you don't want us to hear? And if there's nothing and it's all above board and great, turn the goddamn volume on, let everybody listen to it, and there won't be a problem anymore, will there? Will there? Maybe. It's not the only bit of corruption, stroke, incompetency, stroke, cheat allegations that are going on as well. We move to Manchester City. And we move to Manchester City because we know they're about to sign Savio from he's currently at Girona, belongs to a parent club, all owned. I think they're called Twyes, I think is their name. I may have pronounced that wrong. It's what someone told me the other day. All part of the City Football Group. And fans have been calling this out. Journalists have been calling this out, saying that this is unfair. How does this make sense? Are City going to be paying a fair price? Well, journalists have done their investigations and the Telegraph here states that Man City must provide fair market value evidence to the Premier League before they can sign the player. It says a tightening of the rules covering the transfer between parties under the same ownership means clubs cannot pay under the market value. 
goes on to stay here, as you can see. That is the main headline there, which I think is re really, really important. The article goes on to state that both UEFA and the Premier League both have clauses in their rule book which apply when teams under the same ownership do business together. European football's governing body would be expected to block any deals between teams should they be deemed rivals. In the wake of the Saudi takeover at Newcastle, the Premier League clubs also tighten rules on related party transactions involving its members. Frank Lampard and Jack Harrison are amongst other former City players who have been switched between affiliated teams. The Selvio but the Selvio deal is the first since more scrutiny was introduced to such deals. New rules to deals with loans and multiple club ownership are still being finalized by the league, which means with its sharehold, which meets with its shareholders on Thursday and Friday this week in London. City are amongst a coalition of eight clubs uh, which defeated a temporary ban applying to this January on loans between clubs and the same owners. And I think it's a really fair point because as it stands right now, and I defended City the other day and I am here, there's no signs of corruption or cheating, but there's allegations of corruption here. Now, if this rule is in place and this rule is ratified over the course of the next few days, then they're going to have to pay a fair market value for who has been one of the best wingers in Europe this year. If they're dropping, who's young, got, if they're dropping 20 million pounds on him, then questions have got to be, have got to be asked because can you imagine anyone else getting him for 20 million quid? And there are reports that, 50 million pounds has already been turned down for the player. So if City are getting him at a ridiculously low rate for the current market value of players of his quality and performances, by the way, I mean, it could go on to win La Liga <laughs> with a team that shouldn't have won it. The price should be huge. And if City pick him up for a pittance, for an absolute pittance, then question marks are going to be made. But what I would say to fans is this, the rules are in place, the regulations are in place. Whether the Premier League and UEFA enforce them is another matter, but they can't just pay what they want. So anyone that's worried, oh my God, they'll just be able to do what they want, buy these players, have them at parent clubs, and then City can buy them for little amounts of money. According to this article, it's well worth a read in the Telegraph. That is not possible. So there is no science here at this particular moment in time that City have committed any corruption. There's no cheating going on. Everything should be above board. But the problem people have with these rules is when you look at the situation currently with UEFA. So this is like a trifecta of potential problems within football that we're talking about here today. The UEFA president, Stefan, introduced a presidential term limit in 2016 after the corruption scandals involving Pacini. Eight years later, he now wants to get rid of that three-term rule so he can stay in power for longer. And when you read these types of articles, you think to yourself and you read about these situations Now he'll probably have a fairly plausible and logical justification for why he should stay in place. But the rule was 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 was, was invented and was generated and put into football to ensure that corruption and essentially overstaying your welcome didn't exist. And the fact that already you for want to pull that away. Power goes to people's heads. Now, I'm not accusing him of any corruption at, at this point, but. Power goes to people's heads and history is littered in politics, in sport, in, 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 in every industry of rules that get put in place to protect everybody, then being circumvented and changed to suit the people that are currently in power. So when you think about the FFP rules, what City are facing, what Chelsea are facing, you look at the situation with VAR and the governing bodies having pressure put upon them to ensure things are perfect. How are we meant to have faith that any of this is going to happen? If the governing bodies themselves appear to do things which could be full of corruption, which appear a little bit dodgy, mate, how are we meant to have faith when this is how the people that run our game behave? Sethrin may have done a very good job over the past eight years, but he should not be changing this rule. I don't, not, there may be a logical explanation, but it's one that I don't agree with. There may be a reason that you provide in the comments to me that makes sense. But as far as I'm concerned, I cannot, I cannot for the life of me fathom a reason to change this. Let's keep the term rule in place. Let's keep the leadership at the top in multiple positions changing. Let's not allow the same people to continue to run our game decade after decade after decade. Let's keep it moving. That's my views on it, people. I want to get yours.
You know, there's, the, the thing is, I love football. I love what we see on the field of play. But it's every bit as important to look at how the Premier League operate. Are clubs adhering to the rules and regulations that are being set? Are the governing bodies enforcing those laws? And what are the governing bodies doing themselves behind the scenes in relation to their own control, their mm. own power? All of this, I think, is abundantly important to the integrity and fair play within football. As ever, your opinions, your views, your feelings regarding these situations are far more important than mine. I genuinely mean that you're the best football community in the world. Leave your comments below. Subscribe to the Terrace. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. I'll see you soon.